but um, across many major cities uh, across the US and Canada. So today we'll get a glimpse into uh, you know, the world of Jagannath, the stories, and the Ratyatra Ch uh, Chariot Festival, which is going to be facilitated by uh, Mahabhagavad Prabhu. So just a brief bio about Prabhu, uh, Mahabhagavad Prabhu, uh, some of you may know, many of you might know actually, he serves in our community, but he got introduced to practice of Krishna consciousness through a copy of Bhagavad Gita. So someone had gifted him the book many, many years ago, and since then he's been on an ongoing quest and, and learning the science uh, from Bhagavad Gita and other uh, scriptures. He serves in our community in many different ways, uh, one of them being you know, facilitating spiritual discourses, connecting with a lot of newcomers, mentoring, counseling, and also cooking for the deities. So without further ado, we'll pass it over to him as we are already a little late. So please join me in giving a thunderous round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. some love for Krishna and you will make this uh, investment of time. So our hope is that we will use your time for your best benefit. Um, I'm very grateful that some of my teachers are here, especially my teacher Rupan Mahaprabhu who is sitting there on the chair in the back and of course Shila Prabhupada who is our teacher in general for all of us. So thank you very much for, uh, for joining us. We'll start with Jai Radha Madhava and then we'll uh, come to the class.
अध्याय तेरी लाख वरिष्ठ ओम विष्णुपाल परमहंस परिवचकाचार्य अष्टोत्तर शत श्री श्रीमद भी दिवाइन वेशिला अभय चरणारविंद भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी त्रिरंगी गोस्वामी महाराज को पास की जय जय तेरी लाख वरिष्ठ ओम विष्णुपाल परमहंस परिवचकाचार्य अष्टोत्तर शत श्री श्रीमद भी दिवाइन वेशिला भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी महाराज को पास प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गौरभक्त श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपीनाथ श्याम गोवर्धन श्री वृंदावन धाम की जय नवद्वीप मायापुर धाम की जय गंगामय की जय यमुनमय की जय भक्ति तुलसी देवी की जय श्री हरिनाम संकीर्तन की ट्रांसेंडेंटल बुक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की जय ट्रांसेंडेंटल प्रसाद डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन की जय सामवेदा भक्त वृंद की जय ऑल गुरु सत्संग में लिवोटी हरे ऑल गुरु सत्संग में लिवोटी हरे ऑल गुरु सत्संग में लिवोटी हरे ऑल गुरु श्री श्री गुरु ऐसे कोरांग का ऑल गुरु श्री श्री भगवान नमः ओम विष्णुपाल आये कृष्ण प्रेष्ठ हाय भूतले श्रीमदे भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी ने नाम ले नमस्ते सारस्वत We will, uh, we are going to discuss Lord Jagannath today, but like Anjanaya Tirta Prabhu said, uh, it's going to be just a, a tiny little tip of the iceberg because the information about Lord Jagannath is very vast and uh, I'm sure in the coming weeks we will we'll hear a lot more about Lord Jagannath. Uh, we will also connect the Lord Jagannath by the way, for those of you who may not know, is uh, the deity on my right hand side, your left hand side, uh, here at this corner of the temple room, there were three deities, actually four. So there was one deity who was black complexion, dark complexion, and he is Krishna. And there was another deity uh, who was, um, who is actually fair complexion, very white, milk white actually. He is Lord Balram, Krishna's brother, brother. And between them, there was a female personality. Um, her name is Subhadra Devi. She is Krishna and Balaram's sister. And on the extreme um, right side of us, when we are facing the altar, there is actually a pillar, and that is Lord Shri Krishna Sudarshan Chakra. So that's the fourth deity that is on the altar. There, and we have two sets of deities. Uh, one set of deities never leave the temple, except last year and the year before during the pandemic when they actually left the temple. It's, it's amazing how they, how they arranged that pastime. And the gigantic deities that you see behind, like Jagannath Balde Sodra, they annually go on the Lord Jagannath Kathra, which they will be going again this year. Okay? So we will start, um, as always, by relying on the basis of everything for the word, for, for what we say today, from the words of Sri Krishna, because that is the supreme absolute truth, Lord Sri Krishna. We are going to read from Srimad Bhagavad Gita, chapter 10, verse 8. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Perfectly know this. Engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. This translation and the purport that follows is by His Divine Grace, like AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. So let's pay attention to this. Um, this is the maximum value you are going to get in the class. The words of Shri Prabhupada. Okay? The, a learned scholar who has studied the Vedas perfectly and has information from authorities like Lord Chaitanya and who knows how to apply these teachings can understand that Krishna is the origin of everything in both the material and spiritual worlds. 
And because he knows this perfectly, he becomes firmly fixed in the devotional service of the Supreme Lord. He can never be deviated by any amount of nonsensical commentaries or by fools. All Vedic literature agrees that Krishna is the source of Brahma, Shiva and all the dem other demigods. In the Atharva Veda, Gopal Tapani Upanishad 124, it is said, Yo Brahmanam Vidhati Purvam Yo Vai Vedam Chagapayati Sma Krishna. It was Krishna who in the beginning instructed Brahma in Vedic knowledge and who disseminated Vedic knowledge in the past. Then again, Narayana Upanishad, first verse says, Atha Purusho Havai Narayano Akamaita Prajas Jeti. Then the Supreme Personality Narayana desired to create living entities. The Upanishad continues, Narayana Brahma Jayate, Narayana Prajapati Prajayate, Narayana Indro Jayate, Narayana Ashtau Vasavo Jayante, Narayana Ekadasha Rudra Rudra Jayante, Narayana Vadashaditya. From Narayana, Brahma is born, and from Narayana, the patriarchs are also born. From Narayana, Indra is born. From Narayana, the eight Vasus are born. From Narayana, the eleven Rudras are born. And from Narayana, the twelve Adityas are born. This Narayana is an expansion of Krishna. It is said in the same Vedas, Brahmanyo Devaki Putraha, the son of Devaki, Krishna, is the Supreme Personality. This is from the Narayana Upanishad, verse 4. Then it is said, Eko vai Narayana Asina Brahma Neshanu Nako Nagni Somo Nepe Dhyava Prithivi Na Nakshatra Nina Surya In the beginning of creation, there was only the Supreme Personality Narayana. There was no Brahma, no Shiva, no water, no fire, no moon, no heaven and earth, no stars in the sky, no sun. Maha Upanishad 1.2 in the Maha Upanishad, it is also said that Lord Shiva was born from the forehead of the Supreme Lord. Thus the Vedas say that it is the Supreme Lord, the creator of Brahma and Shiva, who is to be worshipped. In the Moksha Dharma section of the Mahabharata, Krishna also says, Prajapatim cha rudram cha piyaham eva sajami vai tau himam na vijani to mamu maya vimokitau. The patriarchs, Shiva and the others are created by me. Although they do not know that they are created by me because they are deluded by my illusory energy. In the Varaha Purana, it is also said, Narayana paro devas tasmai jatas chaturmukaha tasma dhutro avavat deva sava sacha sarvat nyatam gataha. Narayana is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and from him Brahma was born, from whom Shiva was born. Lord Krishna is the source of all generations, and he is called the most efficient cause of everything. He says, because everything is born of me, I am the original source of all. Everything is under me, no one is above me. There is no supreme controller other than Krishna. One who understands Krishna in such a way, from a bona fide spiritual master, with references from Vedic literature, engages all his energy in Krishna consciousness and becomes a truly learned man. In comparison to him, all others who do not know Krishna properly are but fools. Only a fool would consider Krishna to be an ordinary man. A Krishna conscious person should not be bewildered by fools. He should avoid all unauthorized commentaries and interpretations on Bhagavad Gita and proceed in Krishna consciousness with determination and firmness. Om Tatsat. Om Adnyana Timiranda Siddhyananda Shalapai Chakshulun Miritam Miritasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Sthapitam Mena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Padamayam Nadati Sopadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Guru Nvaishnam Apsha Shri Rupam Sarjatam Samana Nagunatam Vitam Tam Chariyam Satvaitam Savatutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Samana Vita Shri Vishakam Tam Apsha हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगतपते गोपेशो विका कांता राधा कांता नमस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरांगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभान सुते देवी प्रणमामि हरि प्रिय वांछा कल्पतरुप चर कृपा सिंधु भेवच पतितानाम पावने भ्यो वैष्णवे भ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत राधा शिवा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे थैंक यू वेरी मच
much. I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My spiritual master opened my eyes with the torch light of knowledge, I offered my respectful obeisance at the lotus feet of my spiritual master. So, in this class, we are going to talk about four things, okay? Just four things, only four things. Okay, the first is, who is Lord Jagannath? Actually, you already heard who is Lord Jagannath, but we'll talk about that. Who is Lord Jagannath? Why does he look the way he does? You saw Krishna on the center altar, Radha Kechur Gopinath, standing there in his three bending form with his flute, the peacock feather, with Radharani by his side. But Jagannath looks a little different. Okay? He, people have misunderstood him. Many mundane scholars who have tried to understand Lord Jagannath have misunderstood him to be some sort of an abstraction or some sort of a tribal uh, understanding of what God is and so on. But that's not true. And we are going to talk about why he, looked, why he looks the way he does. And then we are going to discuss very briefly what is so amazing about him. Actually briefly because everything about Lord Jagannath is just completely amazing. It's just incredible. We are just going to talk about a little bit about Lord Jagannath. And then the most important thing everybody should be asking, right? What's in it for me? With him, right? What's in it for me? Why should I know who is Jagannath? Why should I know how amazing he is and why does he, why should I know, what does it matter to me, what he looks like, why should I care, right? And then, ultimately, what benefit am I going to get? Sri Prabhupada said that the intelligent person should always ask, before doing something, he should ask, what is the benefit that I am getting from doing this particular activity? And then, do that which will give you the maximum benefit, right? That's, that's, the, that's the best thing, right? You invest the minimum amount of money, and you get the maximum amount of money back, correct? So you invest, the, you invest the minimum amount of effort, and you get the maximum amount of benefit back. That's the, that's the goal of life. But, while we are doing all of this, we are also going to discuss three main concepts of our Gaudiya Vaishnava Siddhanta. Okay? In very brief again, right? Because we don't have too much time. Okay? We are going to talk about three concepts. How many? Three. Three. Okay, the first one is called Sambandha. Everybody say Sambandha. Sambandha. Say again Sambandha. Sambandha. The second one is Abhidheya. Say Abhidheya. Abhidheya. And the third one is Prayojana. Say Prayojana. Prayojana. So, how many concepts? Three. Which was the first one? Sambandha. Which was the second one? Which is the third one? Thank you very much. So the first one, Sambandha, for those of you who speak any Indian language, is called, it means relationship, our relationship with Krishna. You know, you cannot do anything unless you know what is my relationship with that thing. You, you can fulfill the objectives of your job when you understand that you are employed for a particular company. You can fulfill the objectives of a business when you understand that I own this business or I work for this business. Right? Similarly, you cannot do anything in relation to with Krishna without understanding our relationship with Krishna. So what is relationship called? And the second one is, once you understand the relationship, okay? Like for example, let's take a boy and a girl, they get married. Like first the sambandha is established. Okay, you are married to this girl, this girl, you are married to this boy, right? Now your sambandha is established. Now once the sambandha is established, now there has to be some action, isn't it? The girl should serve the boy, the boy should serve the girl. And in this way, the relationship can be established, isn't it? So, the next one is Abhidheya, which means action. What does action mean? Abhidheya. And the third one is Prayojana. Prayojana means the objective, the ultimate goal of why we are doing everything. Why we are establishing the relationship, why we are engaging in these particular actions. That is called what? Prayojana. Prayojana or the ultimate goal. Okay? So, we are going to talk about how many goals? How many things? Three. Three things. Sambandha, Abhideya and Prayoga. Of course, these topics are so vast that there are hundreds and hundreds of books written about this by our great Acharyas. So, in the space of a few minutes, there is no way that I can actually go into the technical details. And my status also is as a beginner, so I cannot also go into too much detail about this stuff. So, in Gaudiya Vaishnava Siddhanta, there are three deities which you should know. There are three deities. So the first deity is called Shri Madan Mohan, or he is the Sambandadi Deva, or he is the deity in charge of establishing our relationship 
with Krishna. So anybody who worships Sri Radha Madan Mohan is able to establish um, their relationship with Sri Krishna. And then there is Abhideya, which is the action. So there is a second set of deities, Sri Radha Govinda Devji in Jaipur. And these deities, this deity establishes, helps us understand the devotional service, helps us understand the action in Krishna consciousness. And the third deity is Sri Radha Gopinath. He's right here. Okay. Sri Radha Kichur Gopinath is an expansion of Sri Radha Gopinath. And he helps us to understand the prayojan, the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal of life is given by Sri Radha Kichur Gopinath right here. Okay. Um, now our three respective Acharyas, the first deity was established by Sri Sanatana Goswami. So there is a song, Sanatan Pranadana is Sri Radha Madan Mohan. Then our second deity, Sri Radha Govind Devji, is established by Sri Rupa Goswami, who has written vast literature on, on, on devotional service. And we are actually known as Rupanugas. So all of us, we are followers of Sri Rupa Goswami. And Sri Raghunath Das Goswami has established the third deity, Sri Radha Gopinath, who is the, who is, who, who, by whose blessing we get the ultimate goal of life. Okay, but we won't go into too much detail because we are going to focus on how all three goals are actually also given by Lord Jagannath. Okay? So Lord Jagannath in his, in his form is giving us all three. He is giving us Sambandha, he is giving us Abhideya and he is giving us Prayoga. Okay? So in doing so, it always helps to understand a little bit about Sri Krishna's pastime. So the first pastime and I am going back to last who was here for last week's class, last Sunday? Who was? There are a few, few, few devotees who were here for last week's class. Okay, so if you, if you have, if you missed that class, please uh, watch it on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, which Karuna Sindhu Prabhu carefully takes care of. Um, there is the, the, that class is recorded, and you can watch it again. I, I highly recommend it. Where Rupanuga Prabhu talked about Krishna, the ultimate planner. And he actually talked about the time scale of Krishna's planning and the intricacy of his planning. Okay, if you can hear that class, it will be very, very beneficial. It was very beneficial for me, anyways. So I am also going to follow in the same vein, following in the same same uh, mood that that he established. So we're going to talk about three pastimes. How many pastimes? Three. Okay. We're going to talk about three pastimes. The first pastime is that which occurred five thousand years ago. How many years ago? Years. Approximately 5,000 years ago. The second pastime, actually it is not known how many million years ago it appeared, but it happened at least 2.1 million years ago in Satya Yuga. How many million years ago? 2.1 million years ago. And the third pastime is something that happened just about 50 years ago. How many years ago? 50 years. So 5,000, 2.1 million and 50 years, okay, approximately. The first pastime we are going to talk about. Remember, I said we are going to say who is Jagannath? Why does he look the way he looks? What is so amazing about him? And what's, what am I going to get by knowing all of this? Right? So, 5,000 years ago, Mother Rohini, who is Mother Rohini? She is the mother of Lord Balram. She is the mother of Lord Balram. She came, um, she was in Dwarka, and the queens of Dwarka knew that Mother Rohini has experienced Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan Dham, which are very, very sweet. And then sometimes, you know that Krishna married 16,108 wives and then he expanded himself into 16,108 forms. It's not like one wife had to wait 16,108 nights to see her husband, right? So every wife got to see her husband every night, all the children got to see their father every night. Right? So 16,108 expansions of Krishna. Right? Only God can do that. Right? Nobody else can. Um, so at night, when Krishna was asleep, uh, he would sometimes utter the names of his associates from Vrindavan. He would, he would take the names of, his, of, of the gopis. He would take the names of Srimati Radharani. He would take the names of sometimes his coward boyfriends. And all these queens who had heard all these names but did not know who these personalities were or what and why Krishna is so attracted that you know he's with them but he's talk, he's dreaming of, of, of his associates in Vrindavan. So they actually took Mother Rohini into a room, to a secret chamber, 
only the 16,108 queens and mother rohini were allowed guards were posted outside uh, specifically the guard who was posted was mother subhadra who was the guard that was posted <laughs> who is the center personality on the, this altar here the golden complexion personality female personality you see seen between jagannath and baldev subhadra she was posted as the guard so krishnan balram were somewhere else and mother rohini began to recount the past times of shri krishna in vrindavan with the gopis now these past times are so nectarian and so sweet and so amazing and so much filled with nectar but those past times are easily misunderstood by somebody who is not in the pure consciousness and so therefore anybody else who is not a queen of uh, dwarka or one of one on one some such exalted personality actually is not allowed to hear this past time not even krishna himself was supposed to hear this past time so subhadra devi was posted as a guard now you know the guard closes the door and stands outside right but subhadra devi could not resist herself she turned her ear to a tiny hole in the door and she began to hear this nectarian past times of shri krishna obviously she is completely qualified she is yoga maya herself so she started to hear these past times and the hearing these past times sent ripples of ecstasy through her form through her body now you have to it's it's impossible to compare we have not had any such experience in the material world but you can imagine that when there is something that is pleasurable that happens you kind of sense a tingle down your spine right sometimes it happens sense a tingle down your spine now imagine that you can only imagine imagine that multiplied a million billion trillion times that's what subhadra devi was experiencing and so as she was experiencing this ecstatic past time her eyes opened wide her arms shrunk just like a baby you know like a little you have it's a mundane example but have you seen a when you pick a cat by the nape of its neck it shrinks like that even if it's a full grown cat behave like a little kitten right so subhadra devi you cannot it's, it's a mundane example and i can only mundane examples only go so far but she experienced that kind of ecstasy and she was completely frozen now you know that krishna and balram were far away and they could see that subhadra is nowhere to be seen and mother rohini and all the queens are nowhere to be seen so something must be going on krishna knows that something must be going on so he says to balram balram you please go and check what these women are up to yeah. please go and find out okay so lord balram comes to the door of this assembly hall where mother rohini is recounting to who the queens of dwarka krishna's queens she is recounting the past times and when lord balram came he saw that subhadra devi is experiencing some kind of ecstasy okay so what she is hearing must be completely ecstatic so he came and he put his ear to the door and he started to hear the past times of shri krishna in vrindavan and he was completely transformed and a similar bodily transformation that happened to mother subhadra also happened to lord balram so he was his eyes became wide his arms went he was stunned in ecstasy and he remained there for a long time balram also did not come back subhadra is gone no way to be seen balram is gone no way to be seen now krishna decided to check for himself what is going on you know now this is the hallmark right of 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 krishna's uh, sweetness of krishna's past and krishna himself is eager to hear that you know so when we chant the hare krishna maha mantra let's chant once together 1 2 3 hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare when we chant this hare krishna maha mantra you know we might hear or we might not hear but krishna hears his past times within this maha mantra so in order to give pleasure to krishna we chant what do we chant hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama rama rama, rama hare hare and the more our chanting is higher in quality the more pleasure krishna gets from our chanting and therefore we get a tiny drop of krishna's pleasure 
in the form of taste for chanting. Hare Krishna. So, anyways, Lord Mother Rohini is recounting the pastimes back to the past, and all the queens of Dwarka are enthralled, and so are Subhadra and Balram. And now Krishna is also coming to the door, and he sees Balram is in a strange condition of ecstasy. Subhadra is in a strange kind of ecstasy. Something amazing must be going on in that room. So he puts his ear to the door and he hears. And immediately, Lord Sri Krishna, the master of the universe, Lord Jagannath, he becomes completely transformed by ecstasy. And that ecstatic form is the form that we see on this altar. Lord Jagannath, Lord Balde, Lord Subhadra. The, the Subhadra Devi, they are all in an extremely ecstatic form. Now, what is amazing about somebody who is very, very happy? You tell me, when somebody is in a very happy mood, you can get whatever you want from them. Isn't that true? Right? When the father comes home, the children want something, you know, the mother says, wait, he's not in a good mood yet. Right? Let me feed him. Let him, let me relax, let him relax a little bit. Let him forget all the nonsense that happened at the office. Now you can go to him. Right? Doesn't happen like that. If you want to approach your mother for something, you don't approach when she's upset with something, isn't it? You wait for the right moment. You wait, you wait, you wait. And then when she's in a good mood, then you approach her. Right? Similarly, it happens between husband and wife and brother and sister. You kind of watch out. Even when you're if you're going to ask your boss for a raise, right? You don't ask your boss for a raise the day the company has made losses, isn't it? When the company has made big profits. That's when you go and ask your boss for a raise, right? So, I've helped you make this profit. I deserve a raise. Right? Isn't that true? So, Krishna, Jagannath, Baldev and Subhadra are in the highest ecstatic mood. Right? So, they actually are giving out the highest benediction, which is the ability to, for us to come back here. Us, poor little material souls caught up in the material world, stuck here in the cycle of birth, death, old age and disease, we, just by the mercy of God, just by the glance of Lord Jagannath, we can be, we can receive the highest benediction. So he's in that mood. And just imagine how merciful he is that somebody might be in an ecstatic mood for a second, maybe a minute, maybe even an hour, right? Let's say a father whose daughter is getting married, he's in an ecstatic mood, maybe for a few days, right, until the daughter until it hits that the daughter is actually going somewhere, right? He said, they're in ecstatic mood, right? It lasts for a short amount of time. But in the case of Lord Jagannath, he is in that ecstasy eternally to benefit us. Right? He is in that ecstatic mood eternally to benefit us. Whether you are qualified, whether you are unqualified, whether you are deserving, whether you are undeserving, it does not matter. Right? He's completely ecstatic. And therefore, he does not reason. There is no logic with Lord Jagannath. And therefore, Lord Jagannath is very, very special. Okay, so this is a past time that happened how many years ago? 5,000 years ago. Now we'll look at how this form of Lord Jagannath actually manifested at least 2.1 million years ago. Right? Krishna is a supreme planner. Right? You can't say that there's any chronological order to Krishna's past time because Krishna's form is eternal. Correct? So once upon a time in the, in the Satya Yuga, this is the Kali Yuga, there are four yugas, Satya, Treta, Dwapar and Kali. They are in the fourth and the worst of the yugas. Satya is the first one of the cycle and it's amazing. It's, people have long lifespans, everything is very pure and the benefits are massive. But in that Satya Yuga, there was a king named Indra Jumna. What was his name? <laughs> Indra Jumna. Okay. There are many Indra Jumnas mentioned across the scriptures, but there was a particular king named Indra Jumna. And one night, he was a pure devotee of Krishna and he dreamt of a beautiful form of Krishna as Nila Madhava. How, how many years ago did Krishna appear on this planet, most recently? Five. But Indra Dumna dreamt about Krishna how many years ago? 2.1 million years ago. It's not imaginary, it's, it's eternally existent in the spiritual world. So, Sri Krishna so, was, appeared in a dream um, in the form of a particular deity named Neela Madhava. Neela Madhava is the most exquisite deity of Sri Krishna that is presently not on the earthly planet. That deity was so ex ex exquisite. So he sent out his ministers and it's a very long, beautiful pastime but I will condense it in a couple of minutes, okay? Sorry, please forgive me. 
Um, so he sent out his ministers. They went looking everywhere, high and low. Nobody could find all the all the all the emissaries returned and said, "Sorry, my dear king, we could not find your Nila Madhava, except for one who was who did not return. His name hmm, was Vidyapati. 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 He did not come back. And there are also many Vidyapadis, so it's easy to get confused, but there was one particular minister who did not come back. He found out that after being nearly dead from thirst and hunger, he some, some um, young uh, girl rescued him. She gave him water. She took him to her their village and she introduced him to her father. And there were a particular... Um, class of people known as Shabaras who are ordinarily in the in the materialistic sense regarded as a low caste but they, they gave him shelter, they gave him uh, hospitality and he accepted their hospitality and he noticed that the king of the Shabaras, what's his name? Vishwavasu, used to go every night somewhere, he used to come back not smelling like a Shabar. <laughs> in other words he was smelling very 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 celestial, he was spelling like like he had been to the heavenly planets or something like that. So he, so he guessed, Vidyapati was a clever man, so he guessed that this person must have something special. So he followed uh, this person and discovered that he was actually worshipping the deity of Nila Madhava. So he found the deity. So now he decided that he was going to uh, uh, he was going to bring the bring his king to see the deity now, right? Morning, Ishwar Panishad. Every time a phone rings. <laughs> okay. Uh, so he uh, he was already married to the this princess to the to the king of the uh, daughter of the king of the Shabaras. Um, it's a very long story. But somehow or the other, um, by the time Vidyapati brought the king back to the spot, uh, Nilamadam had disappeared. And the king was thrown into great despair. And then the king appeared again in the form of Nilamadava and said, Oh, you know what? Now I will not be visible on the, in this material universe in this form again, but I will appear in my form as Daru Brahma or the form of Jagannath is Daru Brahma Daru means wood and Brahma means the Supreme Absolute Truth so so how, how will this happen? he said well there will be a log of wood that will float in the ocean you bring this log of wood you have this log of wood carved um, by a particular architect who will come to you, a particular carpenter who will come to you and um, so and, and my form will be manifest to you so Fine, they found the log, put Vishwasu and, and the king in the Jumna took the log of wood out of the water. Um, of course, there was a whole past time where they could not move the log, it was too heavy. But when these two pure devotees touched the log, um, the log moved. And then many carpenters came and the moment they touched their chisel to the, to the uh, wood, the, their chisel would break into pieces. And they lost all their tools, essentially. Until one particular carpenter said, and he, would, he said he would carve the deities. And finally, the deity was carved by by this carpenter. But the condition was that when the carving was going on, nobody was supposed to come in and watch the carpenter working, watch the artisan working. But this king in the Dumna, he did not hear the tick tick sound of the chiseling going on. The door was closed. He said, "This man is an old man. I don't know if something has happened to him. I cannot let him something happen to him." Maybe I should go and open the door. The moment they opened the door, the, the carpenter, who was actually Vishwakarma in disguise, had disappeared. And there were what appeared to be half-finished deities. So that those half-finished, they thought that they were half-finished deities. But then uh, Nilamadav said, no, this is the form that I am appearing now in this, in this age in front of you. And these are the, this is the same form that we see in front of us today. Jagannath, Valdev and Subhadra. And then Vishwakarma decided, sorry, Indra Dumna decided that he's going to invite Lord Brahma to perform the installation. 
So he was such a powerful king that he would actually go to Brahma Loka. But by the time he went to Brahma Loka and came back, you know, time is relative. Different planets have different time scales. So all the people of his kingdom who were waiting for the installation had already died. Their children had died. Their grandchildren, great grandchildren, hundreds and thousands of years had already passed. Um, and so Hindaduna was not recognized, and there was another big confusion. Ultimately, Lord Brahma did install the deities. Uh, in the temple known in, in a place called Nilachal, which is today Jagannath Puri. Right? And so, Lord Jagannath had appeared in this world many millions of years ago. Then the temple was lost and then recovered and a uh, lot, of, lot of great history behind it. So this past time happened how many, how, how many years ago? 2.1 million years ago. And then, what had happened somehow or the other is that even though Lord Jagannath is who? Lord of the? Universe, like Jaga means universe, the whole universe, right? Jagannath is not Hindu Nath, Jagannath is not India Nath, Jagannath is not Puri Nath. Jagannath is who? Lord of the universe, Jagannath. Pitahamasya Jagato, Mata Dhata Pitaham, Vidyam Pavitram, Karar Samar Durevacha. Lord Jagannath is the master of the whole universe, right? What to speak of? But unfortunately, or whatever it is, it's, it's actually Lord Jagannath's arrangement. People who are not born in a Hindu background are not allowed to enter into the temple. So our spiritual masters, the disciples of Srila Prabhupada, for example, who some of them who are of Western, uh, you know, they, they, look, they look like they're white-bodied or black-bodied or Chinese or whatever they might look. But these great pure devotees are actually not allowed to enter the te temple of Lord Jagannath, which is pretty sad, isn't it? So they're pure devotees. They're the ones who gave us access to Krishna and they are not allowed to enter into the temple of Lord Jagannath. So, Lord Jagannath, being Lord Jagannath, being so merciful, wanted to expand his pastimes. And 50 years ago, when Srila Prabhupada went to San Francisco uh, in 1967, this is a pastime that happened how many years ago now? 50 years, 50 years ago. Mother Malati, who is one of Srila Prabhupada's disciples, one of his foremost disciples, very sincere soul, she happened to see some little dolls in a little import shop that had just arrived from India, little dolls. You know? And she, back then, the devotees were not very rich. Okay, today we have a temple on Avenue Road, thanks to their efforts, all the efforts of Srila Shri Prabhupada and his disciples. But back then, they didn't have a lot of money. And they were, they were still also, a little bit in Krishna's mood. So she just flicked one of those dolls. Just picked it up. And, uh, and uh, she thought, this will make a nice gift for my spiritual master. She was thinking, how can I please my spiritual master? This looks very nice. This looks very cute. I'll take it for my guru. And then she brought uh, this little, little thing about this big. This, about this high. Right? In front of, and she put it on uh, this form on, on Srila Prabhupada's table on his desk and immediately he, he stopped everything that he was doing and he started offering obeisances and chanting prayers uh, and, and he was in, she could see that he was visibly moved by this, by this, by seeing this form and so she said, who is this? And, Lord, and Srila Prabhupada said, this is Jagannath. Very good, you have brought Lord Jagannath, you know, and then and then he said, there were two others. <laughs> Can you bring them also? But this time, you know, please pay for the <laughs> whatever you're getting from the store. Right? So he brought, so this is how in 1967, Lord Jagannath appeared in San Francisco. What is the new name of San Francisco? It's called New Jagannath Puri. What is the new name of San Francisco? So San Francisco might be the name. That is, that is being called, and it's also the name of a great saint, so there's nothing Saint Francis, let's say Saint Francis, San Francisco, but Lord Jagannath has adopted San Francisco and called it what? New mm -hmm. Jagannath Puri. And those deities, then Srila Prabhupada had one of his disciples, the husband of, then the husband of Mother Malati, Shamsundar Prabhu, carved a bigger a replica of those little deities that he got from the that he got from Mother Malati from that store, and that was the start of the first Ratyatra ceremony. Because Lord Jagannath, what does he want to do? He wants to bestow his blessings to everybody. 
whether somebody is qualified, whether somebody is not qualified. He doesn't care about those things. And so he expanded to the agency of Srila Prabhupada. So, why did he appear? He appeared why? To benefit us, all of us here. Okay, he has, and then from San Francisco, he traveled all over the world. You know, he has gone to Japan, he has gone to Africa, he has gone to Australia. He's on in every inhabited continent of the planet, Lord Jagannath is present today. Okay, so he has come to Toronto and he goes out on Ratyatra. You know, drunk people see him, drunk people see him, and people who don't know what it means to be clean see him. He just goes through the regular streets because he's in complete ecstasy. He wants to give that mercy to everybody. Okay, so now we talked about we, how many concepts did I say we are going to cover? Three. Three concepts. What are the three concepts? What's the English translation of those? And the goal. Okay. So in the Jagannath Ratyatra, there is an another very important pastime, right, which happened, which is that you know that Krishna appeared in the jail of Kamsa in, to Devaki and Vasu, Vasudev, and then he went to Vrindavan. He stayed in Vrindavan for or for some length of time and then he left Vrindavan, isn't it? He came back, he killed Kamsa and then he went to, he established the capital city of Dwarka, he created this, this land out of the ocean, right? And he, he established all his palaces and he ruled the, the Yadava kingdom from there. And then after the war of Kurukshetra, he did many different pastimes and the devotees in Vrindavan were very sad, very you know, they were serving Krishna in separation. Actually, they were in the, appeared to be very sad, but actually they were in the highest ecstasy. And that ecstasy is called Vipralambha Bhava. But, um, we won't get into all of those details for now, especially since we are way out of time. Sorry. He's been giving me all these glares all this time, but I've been ignoring him very, very, uh, very shamelessly. So, uh, in the Lord Jagannath Ratyatra, the main thing, is when he, there was a particular time when the residents of Vrindavan met Krishna and in, in a place called Kurukshetra where there are lots of uh, auspicious bathing places and there was a solar eclipse so everybody had decided to gather there and that's another long story on its own how they gathered, how they met, how they decided to go back home, separate basically go back there separate ways but they decided that they were talking and they, they said, let's go tomorrow, and let's go tomorrow, and let's go tomorrow. And they just stayed in Kurukshetra and stayed in Kurukshetra and stayed in Kurukshetra because they could not separate themselves from each other. Finally, the gopis decided, the residents of Vrindavan decided that enough is enough. We are not actually going back to Vrindavan without Krishna and Balaram and Sumatra. We are actually going to take them. So they took off his, his kingly outfit because Krishna is a cowherd boy in Vrindavan, not a king brought him back to his simple, beautiful form, uh, not obscured by the opulence of royalty, and unyoked his chariots, the, let the horses go basically, and they decided to pull their chariots themselves, all the way back to Vrindavan. From Kurukshetra to Vrindavan is a long distance, even by car it takes many, many hours, but these residents of Vrindavan, frail gopis, uh, actually pull chariot all the way back to Vrindavan. So the Lord Jagannath Ratyatra and there is a lot of very deep, um, very deep uh, um, understanding there but we cannot get into all of that. But what I am saying to you here is that the Lord Jagannath Ratyatra is an opportunity to take Krishna back to Vrindavan. So what is the prayojan of the Ratyatra? Take Krishna back to Vrindavan. So give him the highest pleasure by taking him back, back to Vrindavan. So, we can serve in many different ways, right? We can serve. There's a lot of effort required. Anjana Tirtha Prabhu is part of the team that is uh, helping to organize Ratyatra. Is there anybody else here? Maybe outside. So there are. It, it takes a lot of effort to organize the Ratyatra. A lot of physical effort. A lot of planning. A lot of, lot of donations too, because you know we are serving 50,000 people prasadam on the island. It, it takes a lot in order to organize the Ratyatra. So, what's in it for you? Okay, this is the final thing that I will say and I will stop here. 
and uh, there may not be any time for questions, but I am here for some more time, so if you, we, can, we, can, we can discuss if you have questions. The Rath Yatra can actually, if you participate in the Rath Yatra wholeheartedly, completely, to the best of your ability and to the best of your capacity, if you give everything that you have got at that point in time to Krishna, then that actually helps you, helps us all to get deeper understanding of our relationship with Krishna. Our relationship with Krishna is that we are His eternal parts and parcels. We are meant to serve Krishna. It gives us a better understanding of that. It also helps us to act in the Rathyatra directly to take Krishna back to Vrindavan. And it actually brings us closer to the final goal, which is to give pleasure to Krishna. That's what we exist for. All of us exist to give pleasure to Sri Krishna. And by participating in the Rath Yatra wholeheartedly, we can actually accomplish all three goals without going necessarily to Karoli or Jaipur. Just by being in Toronto, we get all that benefit. So this is happening on the 16th and 17th of July. So I am begging you, requesting each and every one of you to please do your best, the best of your capacity with your words. Tell people about it. Tell people about the Rath Yatra with your body. Work hard for the Rath Yatra and with, with your whatever um, resources you might have, whether whatever donations you can make to help um, the Rath Yatra festival a grand success. So this is my humble request to you. And Srila Prabhupada brought this Rath Yatra in 1967 to the West. And since then, Rath Yatra has benefited many millions of people outside of the shores of Sri Jagannath Puri. So this is my humble request. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki. So we are going to say Jai Jagana three times, okay? And then we are going to say the Hare Krishna Mahamantra once. So, one, two, three. Jai Jagannath! One more. Jai Jagannath! Once more. Jai you take the cake. I love it. Thank you. So let's take, uh, let's chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra once and, and then we'll end the class, okay? Thank you very much. Together. One, two, three. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada ki. Yes, please. Let's do a big round of applause. <laughs> So before you all meet, just want to let you know that we will continue to have uh, the Sunday Feast program uh, every Sunday 5 p.m. And in the coming weeks, you can expect more uh, talks and sessions around uh, the, the pastime of Jagannath and the upcoming festival. So just one last announcement. Uh, we do have a Sunday Feast concert today. Uh, Archit Gupta Prabhu and his family are... Is anyone here? Archit Gupta? Archit Gupta Prabhu and family. If you are here, please do come forward. We have a small gift we want to share with you. Uh, if not, hopefully, if, uh, we'll, we'll see you next week and we'll be able to give you the gift. Or else, please feel free to come by the front desk uh, if you are. Uh, that is Archit Gupta Prabhu. Um, and as well. so it looks like they're not here. But anyways, thank you all uh, for, for joining us. You can uh, collect your prashadam fees uh, outside. And today's prashadam was cooked by Dwarkana uh, Prabhu and Uttamananda Prabhu. So maybe we can give a, a, a appreciation to the Uttamananda Prabhu for some true prashadam. So thank you all. We, we hope to see you again next Sunday. We didn't have Q and A, so if somebody wants to have a quick chat with Prabhu, please. You're also welcome to come, right, Prabhu? You'll be here for some more time. So feel free to chat with Prabhu, and we'll see you all again next Sunday at 6 p.m. Thank you. Bye.